All right, so let's take a look at this problem called Game of Life. According to Wikipedia's article, the Game of Life, also known simply as Life, is a cellular autom automaton devised by the British mathematician John Horton Conway in 1970. The board is made up of an M by N grid of cells, where each cell has an initial state live represented by a one or dead represented by a zero. Each cell interacts with its eight neighbors, horizontal, vertical, diagonal, using the following four rules taken from the above Wikipedia article. I'll put this Wikipedia article link in the description. Any live cell with fewer than two live neighbors dies as if caused by underpopulation. Any live cell with two or three live neighbors lives on to the next generation. Any live cell with more than three live neighbors dies as if by overpopulation and any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell as if by reproduction. The next state is created by applying the above rules simultaneously to every cell in the current state where births and deaths occur simultaneously. Given the current state of the M by N grid, board, return the next state. So as you can see here, uh, it only cares about what the current state was, not you know, intermittent states, the reason why they're saying simultaneously. So as you're going from one part of the board to the next, you're not looking at what the new state was to figure out, um, you know, previous ones. So if I was on the second cell, I'm looking at the original first cell value, not its new value. So now as an example here, this particular live cell ended up dying by underpopulation because it has fewer than uh, two live neighbors. And this particular cell that was dead ended up uh, becoming a live cell because it had exactly three live neighbors. So how might we go about solving a problem like this? The naive approach would be probably to create a copy of the original array so that way you could reference the copied value and update your existing value because you're not returning a new array. They're just expecting you to update the board, uh, so that grid board, and its new values is what will be returned because the function is just updating in place. But you need something to reference, so creating a copy would work, but then your, uh, your, your basically your memory complexity would be that you're storing another copy of the grid, so another M by M as far as space complexity. So what could we do? Um, you know, it would also be M by N, two M by N to go through the array twice, or the grid rather, so it's uh, let's think about this more. Could we do an in memory? In memory would um, would work. How would it work? Well, we have integers, so we don't store only zeros and ones. We could end up storing a value greater than or less than ten. So then our tens digit could store the value of what it currently uh, currently is. And then our single digit could store the number of alive neighbors it had, and then we could just apply our rules after that. So then that would be still two m by n, which uh, becomes m by n time complexity. But our space complexity would be constant space because we are just using the existing board, just changing the values and then iterating through it twice. All right, let's go ahead and write the code for that. So uh, while i equals zero, i is less than board.length i plus plus. So in this case, this will be allowing us to iterate from top to bottom. We need to also iterate from left to right. So uh, we'll do j and board of i. So this makes sure that we at least take a valid uh, row here and count how many columns it has and then uh, j plus plus okay and we do know that we are going to end up iterating through twice so i can just copy this all right and then what are we doing uh the first time we are going to change the value so we'll just make an encode function to encode the value to something else and then we can just call the other final iteration update and then we start writing our functions here so void encode what is it going to take? Uh, well, let's pass it our board. And then we also want to know what is the current 
uh, I and J that we are looking at. This tells us where we are in our board, and then we need to start looking at the neighbors. So we can actually go ahead and set this up here so we don't forget to come back to this later. So board I and J, board and I and J in our update because we're just gonna look at the values all over again, but then determine what the new value should be. So for encoding, what are we doing? Um, well, we need to figure out how many neighbors were alive uh, so we can store that in the singles digit and then how many, uh, and then what was the value itself? Was it alive or dead? We're gonna store that in the tens digit. So let's keep track of that alive count of neighbors. So at first it's going to be zero. And now we need to figure out how we're gonna look at the neighbors. Uh, there's different ways to do this. Uh, for me personally, this is kind of the way that I prefer to uh, look left, right, up, down. So we will have, let's say, uh, let's let's say we're going to go ahead and look at a row. So we'll say row equals R. So we're going to start at its first value, which will be negative one. Uh, this is so that way we can look at the row above it. And then we also need to make sure that we stop after we look at the row below it. So it's actually going to be less than or equal to, or you could say less than two also, okay. But less than or equal to one. And then I, or sorry, not I, this is actually uh, R. <laughs> so our row is less than or equal to one and then it's R plus plus, okay. So the same thing, it's a little easier now because we can copy paste this and say the same thing, but for our columns, which we'll say is C. Okay, so we have a way now to look at the previous row, look at the previous column, or look at the current column or the next column and the current row or the next row. Okay, so now that we have that, we wanna make sure that we only look at uh, valid values, but let's go ahead and see where we are each time. So what we're doing in this looping is we're figuring out which neighbor we're looking at. So we'll say that neighbor's row equals the I value plus the row value. So if we were at I is one, uh, I is one, J is one, we would be here. And so then if we add the rows and row is negative one, we're gonna be looking at this uh, row up here actually. And then if we uh, look at the column as negative one, we'll be looking at this value here. So uh, let's also get our column. I'll go ahead and bump this back because it looks like the spacing wants to put me here. So neighbor uh, column equals, and then our J is what we're using to keep track of our columns plus our uh, column negative one, zero or one. Okay, now we need to make sure that we're only getting valid values and we're not running off the end of the array. So um, we need to make sure that our, our row is greater than or equal to zero. And it is also uh, less than our board dot length. Additionally, we also wanna do the same thing, but for the column. So neighbor column needs to be greater than or equal to zero. And we want that column to not run off the end of the board. So it must be less than board. And we know there's at least one uh, row. So we can say uh, board of zero dot length. Okay, so we're avoiding our index out of bounds issues. And now we will go ahead and start looking at the value. So we know we're not gonna run off the edge. Let's just go ahead and get the value of the neighbor. So the neighbor value equals uh, board neighbor row, neighbor call. Okay, now when we're here, here's where it gets tricky. We know that as we're going from the top to the bottom, we started changing some of these values. So if it's a value that we've changed, we're going to need to change it back, um, at least in our temporary variable neighbor value here. So that way, um, that way, you know, we're looking at either a, uh, a one or a zero. 
So uh, let's see, what would signify that we're looking at a previous value? So if, uh, let's see, if the row, oops, uh, well, actually, yeah, if the row is equal to negative one, so if we're currently saying go up negative one, then uh, we're on this row, that is definitely a previous one, or, and we only want to count this particular column, the one that's to the left, not the one to the right or below and to the left. So, uh, or if the row is our current row and our column we're looking at is the previous column. There we go. Okay. So if that is the case, now we need to update our neighbor value equals neighbor value uh, divided by 10. So that gets the tens digit because we know we've already uh, potentially made it larger than 10. If it was uh, less than 10, this will just give us zero. All right. And now what we're doing is we're trying to figure out um, the count of the neighbors that are alive. So if the neighbor value uh, equals one, uh, then we're going to add the alive count. So alive count plus plus. Uh, but there is a problem here. We also don't want to count the current value we're looking at. So let's also make sure we don't do that. Uh, so we'll say and not. So our, our row should not be equal to zero when our uh, column is also equal to zero. This means that we've not modified that uh, neighbor value at all. We're not looking at a neighbor, we're looking at our current cell. So uh, if the neighbor value is one, but we're also not looking at the current cell, bump that alive count. Okay, so after we have done that, uh, we've gone through the loop to look at all of the neighbors. All right, so now we have that alive count. And what we do from here is we update that value to the encoded value. How would we update to the encoded value? Okay, so let's look at what our current value is. It is board i of j equals, and now, we need to update the tens digit and the single digit. So uh, board i of j times 10, reason being that if it's a zero or a one, we're changing it to 10 or zero. Um, this is so that way we can store a one as a 10, and then we're just adding our alive count. All right, that's it for that. So we now have a way to change, uh, essentially if it was this value here, which is a one to an 11, because we multiplied the one by 10 and now it is a, a 10. And then we added the alive count for the neighbor, which is only a one. Now we have 11 here. Okay, that looks good. So now the next thing we need to do is just write our update function. So void update. And we're going to also pass in the board again. And we want to know where we are in our for loops. Okay, so now that we are at this point, what are we doing? We're applying the rules. So to apply the rules, what do we need to know? We need to know if the cell is alive or dead and how many neighbors it has. Uh, so let's go ahead and keep track of how many uh, neighbor count. So this is how many of the neighbors were alive and we stored that in a single digit. So what we're going to do is board of I, J, and then we'll do uh, mod 10. And then um, I can store this in an integer or I could just make this a Boolean. So we'll say, is it alive? And that would be board of I J uh, divided by 10. So that gets the tens digit. And is that equal to one? Okay. So now we know was it alive or not? And how many neighbors it had that, excuse me, that were alive. Okay, so at this point, let's just start applying the rules. All right, so if it is alive, uh, let's take care of cases where it's alive and it dies. So that would be case one and case three. So if is alive and uh, let's see, neighbor count. Uh, if it's fewer than two, so less than two, or the neighbor count is 
more than three. So we'll say neighbor count is greater than three. This is a case where uh, the board will be updated to zero because it dies. Okay, next. Let's, co let's cover another one. So else if, uh, let's say now we have condition two and four. So let's handle uh, condition two real quick. So if it is alive and it has two or three neighbors. So it's this. So not less than, but instead it is exactly two or three. Then it is going to be alive now. All right, and then we did not cover case uh, where it is dead, so that'd be case four. So if it is not alive, else if not is alive and it has exactly three neighbors. For this particular case, it is alive again instead of dead. And any other case, we just want to put the value back to whatever it was. So um, we need to get our, we have our tens digit of what it was or not. It's just is alive. So we will say that it equals, and then uh, we can use a ternary here, is alive. So if it was alive, we want the value one. If it was not alive, we want the value zero. And... That should be it. So we have covered all four rules. Our uh, catch case, if it does not apply to any of these rules, and we can go ahead and submit. Great. So our solution was accepted. Uh, apparently it's faster than 100% of the solutions here. And uh, as I said before, when you're using this solution, you are using a big O of one con so it's constant space because you're using the existing board that is there. You're just changing the values in it and you're iterating through the board twice, which has a size of M by N. So your uh, big O time complexity is just M by N because two M by N just simplifies to M by N. All right, that is it for this problem. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Please take a moment to like and subscribe for future content.